Jeremiah was getting nowhere with the people. There were uh, times when he battled with depression. He felt like that God had given him an assignment that was impossible to complete. And there were moments in Jeremiah's life where he felt like God had mistreated him. He felt like God had abandoned him. If you read the book of Lamentations, you'll find out that Jeremiah felt like God had turned on the entire nation. He felt like God had gone back on his word. He felt like God uh, had broken his promises. He felt like God had changed his mind about fulfilling the oath that he swore to Abraham. Now, I, I, I have to admit that there have been times in 2009 where I understand what Jeremiah was feeling. There have been times in 2009 where I felt like God had abandoned me. There have been times this year where I looked up into heaven and asked God, God, what's the point? What is the use? What is the reason why I'm still doing what I'm doing with no signs of success? Is there anybody in here who ever asked God a question born out of confusion? I, I, I just don't understand. This was the plight of Jeremiah. As he wrote the book, the poetic book of Lamentations. And in the third chapter, he starts off by saying, I am a man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He has driven me away and made me walk in darkness rather than light. Indeed, this is Jeremiah talking about God. Indeed, he has turned his hand against me again and again all day long. He has made my skin and my flesh grow old and has broken my bones. Do you hear the man of God talking about God? and what God had done to him. I wish I had a church that would follow me. This is supposed to be the defender of God's holy word. He's supposed to be the promoter of God's promises, but look at it. He's talking about what God has done to him. I hope I'm preaching to somebody. He has besieged me and surrounded me with bitterness and hardship. He has made me dwell in darkness like those long dead. He has called me in so I cannot escape. He has weighed me down with chains. Oh, I wish somebody would talk to me on this point. <laughs> this is the what Jeremiah is saying about God. This is what the preacher the defender of God's righteousness is saying about Jehovah. Let me go on. He has barred me. Wait a minute. Verse number eight, even when I called out or cried for help, he shuts out my prayer. Anybody believe, anybody have you felt like God had shut your prayer out? He looked like to me he's listening to everybody else's prayer but mine. Everybody else seemed to be getting what they need, but when it comes time for me to get what I need, 
Look like to me, God's not listening. When it comes time for me to get what I need from God, look like God is overlooking me. What's the problem? What's the point? What's the use? Oh, God. He has barred my way with blocks of stone. He has made my path crooked like a bear lying in wait, like a lion in hiding. He dragged me from the path and mangled me and left me without help. Oh, I'm, I'm setting this up. I'm setting this up. Say, well, man, what, you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about the way that we feel sometimes. But can I talk about myself? Because I'm talking about the way that I have felt sometime during this year. Felt like God had left me on the side of the road to be devoured by the lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, he left me to, to, to be mangled by the affairs of this life. Oh, but Jeremiah is not done yet. Everybody say he's not done yet. He's got something else to say. He's, he's got something else to say. Well, what else do you have to say? Jeremiah was get down the verse number 15. He has filled me with bitter herbs and, and sated me with gall. He, he has broken my teeth with gravel. He has trampled me in the dust. Oh, pick it up, Jeremiah. You, you're depressing me, man. You, you're making me feel like it, it's not worth it to serve God. You, you make, has anybody ever felt that way? It's not worth it to serve God. Serving God had gotten me in the trouble. Serving God had gotten me in the poverty. Serving God if I'd only just looked out for myself, I think I might have been in a better shape uh, than to serve God. Look like to me this thing, Brother Glenn, ain't paying off the way the Bible said that it would. He keeps telling me to wait, but it ain't getting any better. It's getting worse. He's te keep telling me to hang on in there, but my God, how long should I have to hang in there? Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. Um, but I hear Jeremiah, he, he's getting ready to set you up. He's setting you up right now because he keeps on going down in verse number 19. He says, I remember my afflictions and my wondering, the bitterness and the gall. I, I remembered. Anybody have a memory in here? Anybody have a memory in here? Anybody remember? Remember how bad it's been. Remember how bad it is. Remember how bad the pain is that you're going through. The thing that keeps coming back to you. The thing that keeps you bound. The thing that keeps you sad. The thing that keeps you depressed. I wish I had somebody to talk to me. The thing that keeps you're bound, your hands bound, you don't have the joy that you used to have, you don't have the shout that you used to have simply because it feel like God have abandoned you. Yes, I remember the bitterness, I remember my affliction, oh God, I well remember them and my soul is that downcast within me. But verse 21, I like what the NIV says, it says yet, everybody help me say yet. Yet, 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 yet means uh, we're getting ready to turn a corner. Yet means uh, there's something behind what I just said. Yet means uh, uh, there's a thought that you need to understand. Yet means that everything that I've said uh, is the truth. Everything that I said is the way that I feel. Yet, oh God, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, in other words, things are terrible. Things are bad. Uh, things uh, have gone down and it seems like I can't get any worse yet. Oh God, uh, I feel a yet coming on. Uh, this I call to mind. Uh, this I call to mind. This I call to mind. What is this? Well, he had not gotten to this yet. He's just setting you up. He said, yet this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. Well, what is the this that you call to mind? Verse number 22, because of the Lord's mercies, uh, we are not consumed. I, I want you to understand something. Uh, the things that have happened this year, the things that, that have brought you down to naught things uh, that have brought you and left you broke, left you disgusted, left you busted, left you depressed. Uh, I want 
want you to know that the fact that you're still here is because of the Lord. The Lord's mercy. One thing we can celebrate, maybe you can't celebrate your bank account. Maybe you can't celebrate the new house you, you bought. Maybe you can't celebrate the new car you bought. Maybe you can't celebrate a new promotion that you got. Maybe you can't celebrate a breakthrough in relationships that you experience. But one thing you can celebrate in 2009, it is because of the Lord's I wish I had a church. It's because of the Lord's mercies. And I want you to understand on December 27th, 2009, as I look back over this year, January, February, March, April, May, I'm preaching already. June, July, August, September, October, November, and just about all of December. I cannot remember. Oh, God. Remember, I'm sorry. Only thing I can see is unanswered prayers. Y'all ain't gonna help me. The only thing I can see is things that I wish would work out. Haven't worked out yet. Things that have happened, I wish they had not happened. Things that have gone down, I wish it would pick up. Things that are not going the way that I prayed for. But I come here to celebrate. I shun God of the most to understand that I'm in celebration mode. Is there anybody that can celebrate with me? Mm -hmm. I didn't get anything for my birthday. I didn't get anything for Christmas. I wish I had a church. I Oh my God. I didn't get all that I wanted. I didn't get all that I wanted from God. I still got some unanswered prayers that's on the altar. But Sister Cranford, I'm in celebration mode. Ooh, I'm in celebration mode. I come here today to celebrate the Lord's mercies. Because if it had not been for the Lord's mercies, I would be consumed right now. Things, things, is not the way that I want them to be. But because God had mercy on me, I haven't gone down yet. Because God had mercy on me. God's mercy propped me up. God's mercy kept me up. God's mercy kept me from going down. When the proud waters went over my soul. When I was overwhelmed by the affairs of life. God kept me. The choir sings a song. He kept me. The Lord kept me. He reached out and grabbed me. When I was going down for the last time. When I was going down for the count. The Lord. He held me up. Yes. And let me tell you something. I want you to know. I've learned uh, that I can go to the rock of my salvation. Uh, I can go to the stone uh, that the builders rejected. Uh, I run to the mountain. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna help me. Uh, I run to the mountain. Uh, and the mountain uh, stands by me. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, when you can't go to your spouse, uh, when you can't go to your boss, you can go to the rock. You can go to Jesus. You can go to Jesus Christ. And he will hold you up when the wind blows. The Lord will hold you up when the storm arrives. The Lord will hold you up because of his mercy. I'm still here. I'm still fighting. I'm still jabbing. I still got a left hook. I still got a right cross. Because of the Lord's mercy. I would have left here a long time ago. I got another testimony. If it had not been for the Lord, put on my side. Why don't y'all help me preach? Tell your neighbor. If it had not If it had not been the Lord.
Lord who was on my side if it had not been the Lord oh, oh, oh. and if you keep reading Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22 you'll see where it's saying because of the Lord's mercy we are not consumed because his compassion fail not and then it said they are new every morning well what's new his mercies they are new every morning y'all ain't gonna help me when the sun peeks over the horizon and I open my eyes it was his mercy that woke me up it was his mercy that started me on my way it was his mercy I got hands to clap I got feet to dance I got a mind to think I got a tongue to talk it's his I wish somebody would help me it's his mercy that he no more shall it's his mercy why I'm here today they are new Every morning, Monday morning, don't feel like going to work, but his mercies, they are new, not like yesterday, yeah, 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 they're not like yesterday, but they are new, every morning, say yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I wonder why. I wonder why God never runs out of new mercy. He never runs out of mercies. Y'all ain't gonna help me if you will only open your eyes and see God. See what God is doing. See that God is good to you. I don't care how bad it is. God is good to you. Don't care how bad you feel. God is good to you. Don't care how sick you are. God is good to you. Don't care how broke you are. God is a good God. I said God is a good God. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Yes, he Oh, 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 but wait a minute, the prophet is not done. After he told you about the new mercies, I wonder why y'all looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. After he talked about the new mercies, then he said, great is thy faithfulness I shall not of emotion great is thy faithfulness God I didn't come here to complain God I refuse to complain because great is thy faithfulness great God is so faithful he is so faithful he's so faithful he's faithful Every day, he's faithful in the morning. He's faithful. Oh. Uh. Every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. Slap your neighbor high five and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I feel like celebrating. I feel like celebrating the Lord's faithfulness. I feel like celebrating the Lord's faithfulness. I feel like celebrating the Lord's faithfulness. He's faithful. 
He's painful. Oh. You know what it means for God to be faithful. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you know what it means for God to be faithful? That means when your friends are not your friends no more. That means when your husband becomes your ex-husband. That means when your family turn their back on you. Why I can't get nobody to help me? That means when your friends say they don't want to be friends with you no more. God, he's always God. God, he's always a provider. God, he's always a company keeper. God, he's always a friend. That sticks closer than any brother. God, he's always Alpha and Omega. The beginning, the ending, the first, the last. Now go to three people and tell them, tell them always, 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 always. Always, always. Always, always, always. Always, always. Always, always. Always, always. 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 Oh. Always. I wish I had a church to help me. Always. I heard him say, I'm God, and I change not. He was God on January 1st, and guess what? On December 27th, I hear him saying, I'm yet God. I didn't get my wife anything for, for Christmas. Now some of y'all gonna look at me strange. We, we, we don't do that no more. But on December 26th, guess what? I'm still her husband. Let me tell you something else. Pastor Witcher, my wife been asking me for years. Man, I feel like shouting. My wife been asking me for years. I want a remote starter for my car. Now there's a reason why I haven't gotten it for it yet. You know what the reason is? I keep forgetting. But guess what? I'm still her husband. <laughs> She's been asking me for years. Give me a remote start for my car. I tell her, okay. And I forget. Shut up, oh But guess what? I, I'm still her husband. And it's coming. Some of you been praying to God 
for something for years. Yeah. And the fact that he hasn't done it for you hasn't stopped him from being God. He's still God. Man, I feel like shouting. <laughs> Why don't you go to three people and say, he's still God. He's He's still God. He hasn't stopped being God. He's still God. Now, I'm, I'm getting ready to go. I done lost track of time. I'm about to go to my seat. Elder Glenn, I want you to come and take this mic and raise the offer. Ah, nah, nah. Ah, nah, nah, nah. But I want you to shake your neighbor's hand one more time. We, we just about done. Shake your neighbor's hand one more time. And tell them, neighbor, God is still God. So don't celebrate him because you got what you wanted because maybe you didn't but celebrate him uh, because he's still God oh. he's still God I'm God every day yeah. Oh! 